Hey guys, Chad Trofgerman here. Today I'm going to go over the magnetic lasso tool in Photoshop. Now, unlike the other regular lasso tool, this one allows for greater accuracy as well as ease of use. Because when you're going through and selecting the object in your image, it actually attaches magnetic little anchors to the selection automatically, allowing you to go ahead and select things with greater accuracy. It makes things easier because it doesn't rely so much on the way you handle the mouse, like your steadiness and all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and check this out and see what it does. The first thing we need to do, obviously, is select the tool, and that is the third option down on your toolbar. Now it does share that space with two other lasso tools, so you might need to hold in your mouse button to get to it, just like that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is take my zoom in tool and I'm just going to zoom in on the leaf here really quick just so we can kind of see what we're doing. Now with my lasso tool selected, the first thing I'm going to do is hit the caps lock button. When I do this, you can see it obviously changes the way my cursor looks. That plus sign in, in the middle of that circle is where your anchor points will be set when you click down. So let's go over here to my leaf and I'm going to click down right here. And this will begin the process. Now, as I move my cursor, you can see it kind of morphs to the leaf as I go along. Sometimes it's not perfect, other times it's pretty good. But as I moved along, you'll see that another anchor point was set down. If you direct your attention to the top where it says frequency, you can see that I have it set to 60. Well, the higher that number, the more anchor points will be set down automatically. You can also set these down yourself just by simply clicking the mouse button like this. Now you can also delete anchor points. Let's say for instance you're going along and for some reason you mess up. Let's say we go down here and obviously we don't want that. You can simply hit your backspace button and that will redo the last anchor point you set down. And if you keep hitting the backspace button, it will delete all of them, you know, each time before. So another thing to point out when doing this, if you're having a hard time, you might want to go ahead and adjust the contrast, which is also located up there. The higher the contrast of your image, let's say for instance, in an extreme case, you're selecting something black on a white background, the higher you're going to want your contrast set there because Photoshop will have a better um, accuracy when it comes to higher contrast images. Now if your image is, image is a bit washed out, you might want to set that lower because then Photoshop will have a better time grabbing your edges then. The width, which is also located um, up there, basically defines how big this circle is. Now that basically means that Photoshop will go ahead and look for um, the edge of the selection you're trying to grab within that circle. So the bigger the circle, the bigger the parameters for that edge search will be. So a bigger circle means you can go a bit quicker, but it also means if you have less defined edges, it will be a little harder, of course, to grab those um, edges when going through. So if your image is less defined, you might want a smaller width size for that. And you can't really select that stuff on the fly because, for instance, if I was going to go up there, like, oh, I'm going to select my width. Um, as you can see, it like draws as you go along. So let me just hit the backspace button here really quick. Um, like that. What you're going to need to do is use your square brackets to adjust the width. So when you use your square brackets like this, you'll see it makes it bigger and then if you use the other one it makes it smaller. Now for your contrast what you do is if you want more contrast you use the period key on your keyboard just like that and if you want less contrast you use the comma key like that. So anyway I'm going to go through here and just finish selecting this so I'm going to speed the video up to save us some time so I will be right back. Okay, there we go. I have my leaf selected. There is one problem though, and this won't happen with all selections, but in this particular case, there is a problem. 
If I go ahead and I zoom in here, you will see that there is a little gap here that should also be selected. Like this part should be actually excluded. So what I'm going to do is take my lasso tool and I'm going to go ahead and hold in my Alt key. And I'm going to start right here and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna start just coming down like this. This, what this will do is it will create another selection so it won't include this when we go ahead and do what we're going to do with our image, whether it's alter it or cut it out or put it somewhere else. So I'm simply just going to come in here really quick and get this out of here, just like that. And then when we release the Alt key, everything is fine. And you only have to use the Alt key, you can only pre you only have to hold in the Alt key once um, when doing that. You don't have to hold it in the whole time. I guess I should have mentioned that. So there you go. We zoom back out and we are good to go. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to Edit, Copy, or Command or Control C, and then go to another picture here. Probably not the best example, but and I'm going to go to Command or Control V and then I will just slide the image down into this new image. Now again, of course, this isn't like the best probably example when it comes to mixing pictures, but it was what I could find on short notice. So, and that's basically how you use the magnetic lasso tool. So anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you guys next time.